Welcome back to another CPU tuning video. In my hand, I have the AMD Ryzen 5800X3D, which is supposed to be the most powerful CPU for Star Citizen due to its 3D cache. We're gonna test that claim by pushing this CPU further, by tuning its memory and optimizing its frequency to push it further than the specifications it comes out. And to ensure we are not limited by the GPU, we're gonna pair this CPU with the most powerful graphics card, which is the RTX 49. For the full specification, take a look in the description below. To set the stage, we're gonna take a look what the CPU does straight out of the box with no BIOS modifications, and we're just gonna run the fully automated settings that you get if you were to put this in without touching the BIOS. And for the baseline results, we're only gonna do the lower run just to see what performance we're getting as a reference. Note that you can copy this run yourself to compare your own results. Please leave your results in the comments if you wanna share it. This is the classic lower run I shared in all my videos. These settings, as always, is set at very high with the max settings just to ensure we're pushing the CPU to the fullest and we're running 1080p to make sure we're not GPU bottleneck. As a baseline, when you do plug and play with the 5800X3D, you will get 2066 megahertz on the RAM clock. With the plug and play settings, we're getting on average 70 FPS and 34 on the 1% low. Running with these settings is more common than you think. A lot of people forget or don't know they need to go into the BIOS, change the RAM frequency. Now, if we do that and include the 3000 600 megahertz, seal 16, these is the results we're getting. We're getting 80 FPS on an average and almost 40 FPS on 1% lows. To round the figures up, we're looking at roughly 15% improvement both on the 1% lows and on average. So that means a lot of you guys are leaving that kind of performance on the table. To tune the AMD system, we need to make sure that the memory clock, the fabric clock, and the unified controller clock is set one to one. And that means we're actually limited in how far we can push the memory without uh, missing the one to one ratio. If we go out of the ratio, we will actually lose performance. So with this platform I have, we're looking at getting the MCLK, the FCLK, and the UCLK to 1,900 across the board. This gives us a one-to-one -one ratio, but also gives us a frequency on the memory at 3,800 megahertz. And because the 5,800X3D has a dynamic frequency ranging anything from 3,400 to 4,400, it was fluctuating a lot during my initial runs. So I use a PBO, which is Persistent Boost Optimizer Curve, of minus 20 to ensure that I could lock the frequency at 4450 and I was able to achieve that stable clock throughout running Star Citizen by running these settings. Normally you can optimize your Ryzen system further however for my system and my memory I got a very much an average overclock. Some out there can actually get the RAM to 4000 megahertz with the MCLK and FCLK and USLK at 2000. This is ideal but for me it didn't really work. With the tuned memory and PBO we were able to get the 1% low increased by 19% while the average was increased by another 15%. That is quite substantial. We're now almost hitting 100 FPS and we've increased the 1% low significantly. With my platform, you can actually overclock the bus frequency to increase the core clocks. However, I was out of luck here. I couldn't push it above 100 megahertz. So this is why the base frequency is fixed at 4.45 gigahertz. Looking at the IDA results, we can see how the latency has improved going from 2,666 MHz to 3,600 MHz and finally settling at 3,800 MHz. Taking a look at IDA64 cache and memory benchmark, we can see how the tuned memory improves as we step up from 2,666 MHz to 3,600 MHz and finally settling at 3,800 MHz. We're also improving the MCLK, FLCK and UCLK drastically and this is also benefiting the write performance and the overall performance of the system. Now when you think about the memory performance it's not only the read write and copy that increases performance it's actually the decrease in latency and what you can see here is we're going from 81 nanoseconds to 63 and finally settling at 57. These decreases in latency is actually what gives Star Citizen its performance benefit. If you look at the uh, 63 nanosecond latency to 57, that's a 10% reduction in latency. Meanwhile, we're actually in boosting the MCLK and FCLK by roughly 5%. This actually is what accounts for the 15%-ish performance benefit you're seeing on the benchmark. So when people say that 3 cache is all that, it's still being limited by the memory. Looking at the results, with with the 1300K tuned memory and the 
plug and play XMP results, we can see that the 5,803 cache is performing very well to more expensive CPU. We're looking at roughly 17% improvement with the tune 1300K on the 1% low, with only 7% performance improvement on the average. This is very, very impressive for a much cheaper system in comparison to Intel. Now, one thing you're noticing is that the 5,803 cache has a little bit lower uh, 1% lows, and we want to dig deeper into this to see how it performs across other areas in Star Citizen. Looking at the Area 18 run, uh, a planet which doesn't have any clouds, we're actually seeing a quite an interesting performance difference here. The average is virtually the same uh, you wouldn't be able to bat the difference here. But when we look at the 1% lows, we're actually seeing a 28% faster 1% low on the 1300K system. Now, I've seen some interesting patterns here. We're going to dig deeper into why that is and why the uh, 5,800 3D cache has lower 1% lows. There's definitely some interesting information you can't get out of these charts. Looking at Orison, we're seeing roughly 6 to 7% performance differences on the average. But when we look at the 1% lows, we're looking at actually a 50% performance difference between the 1% lows. That is quite a lot here. The 1300K is just faster on 1% lows, and it was very noticeable when I was playing the game. And the question is, why is this? Well, Orison actually has roughly double the amount of entities that the CPU needs to calculate in comparison to other planets. So when the entity count is high, so in this case 150,000 entities, is actually hitting the cache so hard that it's probably spilling over to the memory. And as a result, it's getting much lower 1% lows, or it's actually the fact that it has a slower frequency clock or combination of both both are resulting in lower 1% lows. This is actually noticeable. So I asked myself, how come the 5000 X3D is seeing, you know, within the 7 to 10% of the performance of the Intel on the average, but, you know, 20 to 50% difference in the 1% low? How come we're getting such a big difference in performance where it really, really matters? Now, to do that, I dig deep deeper into the frame data and actually noticed something very, very interesting. I also noticed this when I was actually benchmarking. I had a wow moment with the 5800X3D, and that was that it actually had higher highs than Intel system, wow. especially in areas where there was less entities to render, such as Area 18. Take a look at those benchmarks, we can see something very, very interesting here. By including the top 5% of the FPS, basically means the max FPS recorded 5% of the benchmark. So this is a really good way of getting like an average max FPS, essentially. So we can see here in that all runs, the 5800X3D actually had the highest wow highs, anything from 5% all the way to 10% higher highs. And this was actually noticeable in certain areas where just I just noticed that, wow, I haven't seen such a high FPS in these locations. And it was quite refreshing to see. But at the same time, as you can see, it definitely has also the lower lows. So it has a much wider range of frame pacing and frame rates inconsistencies. It, it, it is noticeable when, when it goes down low, uh, but it, overall, when it's high, it's also noticeable that it goes very, very high. So that's quite impressive impressing with this CPU. I just want to put it out there that you will probably see a lot of times that the 5000X3D, where there's not much happening, will actually have higher FPS. And I'm, I'm definitely noticing noticing that, and that's actually quite refreshing. So that's obviously the benefit that it will outperform higher FPS. Now, if we ask ourselves, why are we seeing this performance difference? Well, if we look at the benchmark from Atlas 64, we can actually see the performance of the L3 cache. And the L3 cache sits on top of the chiplet where the eight cores are, and it gives the eight cores access to 600 gigabytes per seconds of read, write, and copy at 12 nanoseconds. This is extremely extremely fast and however this is only for the 96 megabyte of L3, L3 cache. Now what happens is when the game code and logic is on the cache and can, can be accessed from the cache that's when the CPU gets tremendous performance and also if the game logic is, isn't too complex then the 4.45 gigahertz frequency can handle it and output a very high FPS. But the moment it goes outside of the cache and the CPU needs to call the memory then have to travel through the chiplet, the IO chiplet, and travel all the way to the memory, which has an increased latency of 57 nanoseconds, but a much slower read and write and copy access to the memory. This means that what we're probably seeing is on certain very constrained situations, we're seeing a much lower 1% low, but also because the clock isn't as high as Intel clock, we're also seeing an overall lower 1% low. Compare that to Intel, which has 36 megabytes of L3 cache and 32 megabytes of L2 cache, the Ryzen system has a much 
larger cache access than the Intel system. However, if we now overlay the frequency bandwidth and the latency of the RAM access, we can see that Intel has roughly 10 nanoseconds lower latency, which means it can access it 20% faster than the AMD system. With the lower cache, it means that Intel system requests more information frequently to the memory, but because the latency is much lower, it does so much faster. And this can account for some of the performance benefits the, and also the higher clock frequency. Now, obviously, we want the best of both worlds, and that's obviously what the upcoming Ryzen 7000 series with 3D cache is. It's obviously going to have the benefit of the 7000 series with the 3D cache on top, which will increase its performance. Now, I think the same characteristics will be seen here. We will definitely have higher highs, in this case, much higher highs than Intel's, and as a result, we'll also have then higher averages. But I do think still that the 1% low will not be that much higher than what we see with the 7000 series right now. And to evaluate that, let's go and take a look at 10 pound 42's Lover run. And as you know, his run is slightly different. It's a bit longer. And we did redo the whole run five times again with the 5800X3D using his settings, which is the high quality preset with everything else set at medium, including clouds. At 1080p, we do an exact same run five times. And here's the results of the tuned system. So what we're seeing here is that is actually equally as good as the 7700X with the 4080. Now, as I mentioned before in my previous video comparing the 4090 and the 7900 XTX, the 4090 does not add any performance improvement to the CPU or memory, even though it's more powerful than the other GPUs. This is a pure CPU and RAM bound scenarios at these settings using this run. So what we're seeing here is that the Tune system is far more powerful than his own system. The real takeaway here, once again, is that the only thing unoptimized in Star Citizen is your PC. And I do say it tongue in cheek, but I do also really mean it. You can't be running 2666 megahertz or have an untuned system overall and then go on Star Citizen forums and complain how unoptimized the game is. With the latest generations of CPU, whether it's the 12,000 series or the Ryzen 5800X3D or the latest 7000 series, they're all good enough to run Star Citizen with the latest graphics cards at a very comfortable FPS. Not only that, the 7000 series, what you see here with uh, two pound system can be tuned further. I'm betting, once again, can get another 25% performance boost across the board if I had my hands on it. With only a few days left before the 7000 series 3D cache gets released, we can now start speculating and guessing roughly where will the performance land. Looking at Lisa Liu's marketing slides, it is betting that is anything between 30% faster than the 5000X3D and 25% faster than the 13900K. Now mind you, I'm running a tune 3900K, which is roughly... <laughs> 20% uh, faster than a non-tuned version. So does that mean it's going to be 5% faster than my tuned system? Or are we talking about it being equally as fast as my tuned system? Time will tell. But to manage expectations, my bet is out of the box with 6000 XPM RAM, we're more likely looking at similar performance to a 3900K at best 5% faster. However, when I get my hands on it, I'll be able to definitely tune it far beyond that. And my bet is we can probably get it 20 to 25% faster than the tuned 13900K. That would be amazing. Imagine looking at an average 120 FPS with a 1% low of roughly 70 FPS. That's the kind of performance I'm expecting when it's fully tuned. So in summary, whether you have the 5000 series 3D cache or looking to buy one or waiting for the 7000 series with 3D cache, the real summary here is that if you don't tune your system you're leaving a lot of performance on the table thank you so much for coming this far you know what to do do all the seo stuff tune your system subscribe and don't write nonsense on star citizens forums on how the game is unoptimized